How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of my NHL 17 and Detroit Red Wings franchise mode series. As you guys can see here, NHL team has 93 offense, a 94 defense, 89 goaltending. AHL team there, 83 offense, 81 defense, 80 goaltending. So both teams are looking very good. I'm going to show you guys the lines right now in case you forget from the last episode. Um, I think the team honestly has a very good shot to win the cup this year. Last year we lost in the conference final to the Columbus Blue Jackets who actually ended up going on to win the cup. So um, this year we have an even better team. I expect even better results. First line here is the same, Skinner, Strom, and Reinhardt. Second line here, we have Mantha, Barbashev, and Larkin. Third line there is Keller, Wenberg, and Bracco. Keller still hasn't grown since we trade for him like two seasons ago. He's an 83, so I don't know. Like, his third line scoring role, hopefully he'll eventually grow. The low elites, like, you know, 50-50, sometimes they grow, and sometimes they don't at all. Fourth line here, we have Daniel Sprong, who actually won the Calder last year, playing with Athanasiu and Bertuzzi. Defense here is looking very solid. We have Murray and McAvoy in the top pair. Juleson and Jones on the second, and then Bean and Shabbat on the third. In goal here, we have Ben Bishop, who we traded for last summer, and backing him up there, we have Anton Bebo. AHL team here is full of skill. First line, we have Haberch, Hishir, and Comtois. Second line there, we have Moran, Spachek, Svechnikov. Third line, Smith, Velarde, and Case. Uh, fourth line's Bernhardt, Nosik, and uh, Grundstrom. Really hoping like one of these guys will be the AHL scoring leader. I feel like Hishir, Spachek, Comtois, one of them can uh, definitely get it. Defense here, we have Dallin Sarah Jarvie on the first pair. Someone said I should put Dallin on the top pair. Hopefully, he'll grow more, so we'll try that out. Hicketts, Dermott on the second, and then Heiskanen and Jaros on the third. So, really solid AHLD as well. In goal, still we have Avalonian as the starter with Lamb backing him up. So, I'm really excited for this season. I think both teams are stacked. Um, hopefully, you know, they'll both make the playoffs and have a run at their respective uh, cups. We're going to take a look here at the owner goals as well. As you can see, his happiness there is amazing, which is a good sign. It's been a lot lower than that the past few seasons. So say the team's actually a champion. I think last year we were contenders, so it's actually gone up. For the primary goal here, he wants 41 sellouts on home ice, which basically means you have to sell out every single home game, 82 divided by 2. So um, that's going to be kind of tough, I think. Secondary goals there, uh, finish top three in the conference. I think we can pull that off. Beat Toronto in our first meeting. That's obviously going to be all luck. And then have at least four home playoff games. So, I mean, that's really, I don't really like that one because, like, you could sweep the first round and then say, well, I guess if you sweep the first round, you for sure get it. But I don't know. I feel like it would be better if it just said, like, how many playoff games total. Um, but obviously, I think we have a good team. Should be able to do all those goals, honestly, if the season goes as planned. So, we're going to start the sim here. Uh, like I was saying, a lot of uh, high expectations for this season, but I think this team can do it. So at the end of October here, guys, we have a record of 4-2-1, and one, AHL teams 3-2. and two. We actually went 7-0 and oh in the preseason, and then we actually lost our first two games, though. Luckily, we beat Toronto 7-1, so we got that owner goal completed. Fan happiness there, 98. That's like the highest I've ever seen it. Uh, locker room chemistry, 80, so pretty good start to the season. All right, guys, so it's now the end of November. We have a 14-10-1 record. AHL team is so good, 15-3. and three. Fan happiness is still high at 91, but not as high, obviously. Uh, Lockham chemistry there actually went up by one at 81. We actually had like a really rough stretch here. Uh, I think we lost, looks like, six of seven games, which really hurt our record. If it wasn't for that, even if we went like 500 there, I think we'd be well in, like beyond um, any other team. But as you can see, 29 points. We're actually four points behind the Leafs here. So hopefully we can get back, you know, to our winning ways like we did the first month. Um, obviously still looking pretty good. AHL team, 15-3. and three, So how's a team tie with them? That's crazy. Uh, Manto and Moose there. But we'll keep swimming here, see how December goes. So now at the end of December here, guys, we have a 21-15-1 record. So we started doing a little bit better. AHL team still killing it, 22-6-2. Fan happiness there, 87, I think, just because we have to repair a couple things. We're running out of money, though, for that. Uh, Lock and Kershaw there, 82. So it's, like, slowly going up, which is good. I mean, overall, you know, team's looking good. Probably not going to make any trades till the deadline. Just see what rental players are out there. And hopefully make another push for the Stanley Cup. So I just got a player back from injury, and it reminded me that somebody said to turn down the injury current so I didn't have to constantly deal with it. So I just found it here. I'm assuming this is what they mean. It's currently at 50. I'm going to turn it down to 25 for both computer and human. I'm not really sure if it's like humans, my team, computers, the rest of the computer teams. But we'll hit that at 25 there. I feel like that's still fair. Like injuries will still happen, but half as much as I feel like they happen a lot more than normal. Um, at least I don't know, in my eyes for a video game, at least they do. So um, if you guys want to know how to do that, by the way, you just go to uh, league settings there. Uh, once you're in league settings, you just go to the gameplay sliders and uh, it'll be right there. So, I'm going to keep simming now. We're almost at the All-Star game. And as you can see, our fan happiness is now at 96. So it's gone way up. Locker room chemistry there is still in 82. Uh, I'm going to take a look and see where we are in the standings as well as who our leading scorers are. So, uh, we're first place right now in the division, 64 points. Buffalo, though, right behind us, there were 61, only three points back. Um, obviously, we kind of rallied back after that one bad month. We've really been killing it lately. Sprong's actually our leading scorer there with 44 points. Uh, won the Calder last year. I've been playing on him on the fourth line for the most part. Sometimes he like gets called up to the second if there's an injury, 
or even like the third sometimes, but that's pretty crazy. We'll see where we are in the entire NHL right now with 64 points. Tied for second there with Columbus, right behind Anaheim, so not bad at all. And like I was saying, Sprong leading our team in points is really surprising to me. 44 points, still an 82. I don't know why he can't grow if he has that many points. Makes no sense. Uh, Larkin there's got 42. He's an 88 now. Reinhardt there with 40. Uh, Skinner's got 38. Barbashev 32, not bad. Strom 31. So Barbashev's actually doing better on the second line. Uh, Wenberg 27. Mantha 25. I like a bit more from Mantha there. Uh, Bean's got 22. Highest scoring defenseman. McAvoy 21. Uh, actually, defensemen are contributing a good amount. Shabbat even 18 points from the third pair. So, it uh, looks like the team overall is doing pretty good. Take a look here at the goalies. Just see how Ben Bishop's doing. 2.32 uh, goals against. Decent. 0.922 save percentage. Two shutouts. Not too bad. And take a look at the AHL team. Now you can see our leading scorer is actually Sarah Jarvie with 43 points as a defenseman. Uh, point per game is pretty crazy for him. Habert here, 43 as well. Hischer has 43 in only 32 games, obviously. Uh, called him up sometimes for injuries. So, he's absolutely killing it. I mean, tied for our two leading scorers in, like, 10 less games played. That's nuts. Spot check's also got a point per game. That's why our HL team's doing so good. Uh, Comtois, 33. Svechnikov, 25. Moran there's got 23. Same with Grundstrom. He's usually on the fourth line. Dallin's got 23 as a D-man, so that's pretty good as well. Um, and also, you can see he played a little bit less games. We did call him up sometimes for injuries. So, really impressed with this AHL team. I'm going to take a look here and see how Vava Linen's doing with his stats. 2.17 goals against. Lamb there, 1.81. Like, this guy always puts up great stats. Uh, 0 0.921, 0 0.933, and three shots and two. So, I mean, that's a really good AHL goalie tandem, it looks like. Also, going to see where our AHL team is in the standings right now. Uh, they should be pretty high. Let's see here. I'm guessing for sure first in the division. Yeah, 66 points, actually 11 higher than Lake Erie. Also, right now, we're going to take a look and see which of our players made it to the All Star game. If I had to guess, I'd probably say, see, I don't feel like Sprong would have made it with 44 points. So, like, maybe Bishop makes it. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let's take a look here. So I'm looking through guys, and I don't see any of our players that made the All-Star game. So I think we do have, like, one in the All-Star game if we actually were able to play it, but no one good enough to make, like, the message center. Also, there's, like, a message there about Riley Sheehan uh, not playing well in the wild. That's kind of funny. Uh, but like I was saying, I looked through. You got Line A, uh, Johansson there, like, Yossi. So National must be having a pretty good year, even though we just beat them, I think, 10-3. Uh, just a line in Voracek. Yeah, I don't see... Anybody from our team, unfortunately, that sucks. All right, guys, so Dallas just offered me Kim Atkinson in their third round pick for our Winnipeg first round pick. That's what we got back in exchange for Matt Murray. So I'm not sure how good Atkinson is. 6.3 million salary, though, is pretty high. 87 overall. I mean, he's not bad. He would actually beat out Mantha for the second line right wing spot. Mantha would go third line, probably Sprong would stay fourth. And then, I mean, Bracco would go down to the AHL, I guess, or Keller. I don't really know. Um, it's a decent offer. I think I'm going to reject for now and maybe. Uh, look back on it in the trade deadline, just kind of once we have a better idea of what the team's looking like. All right, guys, so today's the trade deadline. We continue to play really well, 37-20-4 and four now. AHL team there, 36-15-4. and four. I'm going to take a look right now and see if we're still first in the division or not. I think we should be. Uh, we are just by two points, so ahead of Buffalo. So I'm going to see what's out there on the rental market. Obviously, Kim Atkinson might be a decent add. Uh, but we're just going to take a look, I guess, and make the best move possible. So right now, guys, trying to get a trade with St. Louis for Paul Stastny. Even though he's 35 years old, he's actually still really good at 89 overall. First line forward, probably move Dylan Strom down to the second line. Would make our centers that much better. Giving up Alex Wenberg. He's 85 overall, but we have two other 85 overalls in Barbashev and Athanasiu. And Wenberg's actually making the most money of the three of them. Plus, he's 26, so after this year, he's done growing. And he actually has never grown since we traded for him. He's just stayed in 85, unfortunately. Um, adding two prospect goalies here. Both AHL starter potential aren't that great, but they want both of them. And then a third round pick, uh, Winnipeg's third round pick, actually, in this year's draft. So the value's on our side, but I have them retain 50%. I don't actually have to have them retain 50%, but I figured why not try so here we go we'll see what st louis says trade ejected um let's see so they want emin or whatever but they don't want stankowski it's still a pretty fair trade without him let's see if we can add somebody else that's like not that great uh let's see scares matching block here just gonna look for somebody that's like really not doing anything for us i mean everyone here kind of fills the rules let's see if there's just like a decent player unsigned or something that has like some value that they'd like um, or not that they'd like, but that we can just kind of give them, um, Varabev, 23.72, that's not that good, he doesn't have that much value, so really no point to give them him, uh, Rieger here, he's okay, maybe just throw him on, just to, low top 9 though, I'd probably either give them this Zubov guy, alright, let's do Zubov here, and then we'll add, like, a 4th round pick or something, and hopefully they'll say yes to that, I think it's gonna be really close, uh, let's see, let's do a 4th in 2022, 
There we go. So hopefully they'll say yes to this. Trade rejected. Don't want to keep that much salary. Okay. So I just reduced the salary to 2 million. So that means we're basically paying Stassi 4.6. So 400k less than Lindberg, but he's older. He might retire sooner. He might start getting worse. Hopefully not. We'll see if they now do the trade. And they still don't. So I just reduced Sassy's salary to 1.6. So essentially it's the same. 5 million for each player. One's an 89 though. And they're getting an HL starter goaltender prospect. This Bob 64 prospect. And then two thirds. As I a third round pick in next year's draft along with Winnipeg's. This has to go through now I think. And it does. There we go. And right now guys we're trying to make one more trade. This one's with Winnipeg for Dustin Bufflin. So as you can see he's still very good. 35 years old like Stassi. But 88 overall. It'll make our defense so stacked. And I'm offering them their second round pick back. This is the one we got for Matt Murray. And then four prospects here they want. All are unsigned. Or actually three of the four are unsigned. None of them are that great though. Like HL starter goalie. Uh, McGillney here. Bombs x forward the best. And then HL top 6 forward, HL top 2 D. So, um, not the greatest prospects, but the value is actually on our side. They want all five things. They don't want Bufflin. This should go through. Here we go. Trade accepted. Our team is stacked. So, after the trade deadline, guys, here's a look at the team. First line there, we have Skinner, Stassi, Reinhardt. Second line, Mantha, Strom, Larkin. Third there, we have Bertuzzi, Barbashev, and Sprung. And then fourth, we have Velarde, Athanasiu, and Keller. Uh, Velarde's currently filling in for Bracco, who's injured. Defense, here we have Bufflin, McAvoy, Juleson, Murray, Jones, and Bean. Just such a sick top six. Goalies there, of course, the same. Bishop with Bebo. Um, also for scratch players right now, we have Brack, who, like I said, is injured. Shabbat and Dallin. Now, Dallin, I would send down the AHL, but for whatever reason, it doesn't let me. It says that sending him down makes us go over the cap, which makes absolutely no sense. So, hopefully when Brack was healthy, it'll let me send Dallin down. Uh, really annoying when there's like weird things like that that kind of stop some of your players' progress because you can't have them play where you want them to. Alright guys, so it's now the end of the regular season. As you can see, we finished the record of 47, 29, and 6. AHL team there, 48, 19, and 6. Still a few games to go though. Fan happiness there, 87, which isn't too bad. We're going to see where we finished in the entire, our division, and then the entire league, I should say. 100 points, 4 behind Buffalo, so have a playoff spot. Unfortunately though, did not take the division. Buffalo actually took the conference, so Buffalo had a great year. Pretty sure we're probably like top 5 still in the league. Stassi there, 85 points, is actually our leading scorer. Um, let's see, so second in the division. And the entire league, we finished 5th. So I said top 5. We did just make top 5. Take a look at the leading scores now to see how everyone did. So Stassi, like I said, 85 points, 81 games. Honestly, great. Uh, Reinhardt there, 73. is actually 91 now. Skinner at 68. Sprong, 59. I don't know how he's still in 82. Actually, he really cooled down in the second half of the year. He had like 40, I think, in 50 games. Now he has 59 in 82 games. So uh, definitely cooled down a lot. Strong, 58. Larkin, 56. Barbershop, 42. Uh, I think he cooled down a lot, too. Um, Buffalo in there, 36, isn't too bad for defensemen. Mantha, definitely wish he did better than 34 points. I think he had, like, 26 last time we checked, so a lot of these guys just did not do as well in the second half of the year, but we're in the playoffs, so, like, anything can happen now. Obviously, isn't the biggest of deals. Taking a look at Bishop's stats here, 2.31 goals against, uh, 0.919 save percentage, 5 shutouts, that's pretty good. And as you guys can see here, Patrick Kane leading the entire league in points with 106, Tarasenko 103, Taze 103, I feel like that's... Super unrealistic. Stamkos 96. Johansson at 94. Panarin 91. Crosby there with 90. Getzlav still killing it at 35 with 88 points. Barkov 85. So Stassi there with 85 is actually pretty high up there. Uh, not bad. And take a look at the HL lean scores now, guys. As you can see here, his shoe has 70 points in 62 games. So if we never called him up, he'd probably have 80 plus. Sarah Driver 65. Spotcheck 65. This Haberch guy 61. Comtois 57. Uh, this dude's 46. Ran 40. Like. The AHL team's honestly killing it. I'm wondering, too, um, where his sheer is in terms of, like, the entire AHL league. Uh, it would really suck if, like, he missed out on the title just because of those games we called him up for. So, he's third place. If he played those 10 extra games, I think he would be first. So that kind of sucks. New Jersey, for whatever reason, has this 85 guy in the AHL. That's nuts. Also, guys, forget to show you the AHL standings. As you can see, they're first place in their division. They've actually already clinched the conference. I'm just wondering if they are first place in the league. Uh, they probably are. Like, our AHL team is just... So, so good. Take a look here. 102 points. Oh, they're actually four points behind Sound Tigers, but three games left. Maybe they can win it. Before I start starting the playoffs, guys, I want to give you an update on the owner goals. As you can see, we failed to finish first in our conference as Buffalo beat us, but we did actually have 41 sellouts this year. So our team was so good. Every single home game was a sellout, which is awesome. And the first round of the playoffs, of course, the classic matchup here, going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So let's see if we can get this win. Um, hopefully we can. Obviously, we have a very, very good team. Tampa Bay, though, they have Stamkos, they have Kucherov. It's going to be a close series. First game, first period. Kucherov, Bertuzzi each score. Uh, second period here, Stamkos and Duran score for Tampa Bay. Jake Bean scores, unfortunately, not enough there. So 3-2. Kind of tough uh, losing that first game at home, but obviously a lot of games left. Uh, kind of funny, too. We have Bishop, their former goalie. 
Um, hopefully, you know, he can uh, rally as he wants to show his old team up or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. So, first period, guys, the second game. There we go. It's a statement. Larkin, Bertuzzi, Mantha all score. Second period, Skinner gets one. Dran point, though, so it's a 4-2 game. And then Sprung there, uh, just making sure we get that lead. So, 5-2 win. That's big. Tying it up 1-1. Um, hopefully, we can just keep it going here, going into Tampa Bay. So far, though, I mean, pretty pretty good. I think, like I said, even though Tampa Bay is whatever team, probably like 6th place or something in the playoffs, they have a lot of offensive firepower. So, they're going to be a tough team to beat. Third game here. Here we go. First period. No scores. Second period. There we go. Strom, Bertuzzi, and Mantha all score. And nothing in the third period. So winning that game as well. That is awesome. 2-1 series lead now. Uh, maybe we can just win four straight here. Beat them in five. That would be awesome. Let's see what happens in this next game. I think our AHL team is going to start the playoffs now. Um, and they are. They actually finished with 50 wins. So that's really awesome. Uh, Comtois there is injured. So we'll just go best lines in the AHL. Um, game number four here though in the playoffs. Let's win this. We'll go up 3-1 in the series. That would be awesome. Here we go. Uh, no scores in the first. We actually had one shot, it looked like, to 13. That's terrible. Uh, Radish and Stamco score for them. And then Sompi and then Strom scores for us. So 3-1 loss. Uh, didn't look like the best of games, so that's okay. Um, it's still 2-2 series. Very, very much in this. Uh, for whatever reason, though, I feel like the playoffs are always just so much tougher than the regular season. Like, you could have a team go undefeated in the regular season, and the playoffs still aren't a sure thing in this game, which I guess is a good thing. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's tough. So, here we go, guys, game five, first period, Mantha, Athens, see you, Stamkos, 2-1 for us, Stamkos with another one, Howden, Skinner, 3-3, three, three. wow, they just went off on us in the third, Stamkos, Point, and Durant, so, that sucks, 6-3 loss there, need to come back now and win the next two games, obviously, it's very doable, but it is gonna be tough, AHL team there is 1-1 one one in their first round, so that's a best of five, um, hopefully they can pull that one out, they're now 2-1, so here we go, game six. Need to win this one. Do or die at this point. First period. Skinner and Palat score. Skinner scores another one. And Larkin scores. So here we go. Keeping us alive. 3-1 game. That is huge. Forcing the game seven. I'm honestly a little worried there. We're going to get knocked out first round. Especially after trading for Stassi and Bufflin. Uh, that would have been horrible. But we are still alive. All we got to do is get by this series. And then it's just basically one game at a time. I think I forgot to put Comtois on the lineup there. So uh, once I sim gift this game, I'll do that. Game 7 here, please, please, please pull this off at home. First period, Sprong scores, second period, Strom scores, third period, Juleson scores, there we go, we shut them out and take the series of the Game 7 win, that's awesome. Next on the playoffs here, guys, we're going up against the Florida Panthers, we get to take on both Florida teams, also AHL team there, won their first round 3-1, to one. so here you go, Game 1 of the second round, we actually have home ice in this one as well, which is good. First period here, um, Martinson and Reinhardt each score, second period, Marchesu and Clifford score for them. Ekblad and Larkin, so unfortunately lost that game 4-2. Hate losing the first game, happened last series, but able to come back, of course, and win that in 7, so not too worried yet. Um, I don't know who Florida's goalie is either. I didn't even actually check when I was looking at the scores, so I definitely should do that now. As Luongo's uh, long retired, um, so I'm kind of curious to see who they got. Maybe it's like a young guy. Um, Montembeau. I feel like I recognize that name. I'm not sure, but Mantha scored, so it's one nothing. Bukestad scores 1-1. Bracco there, game winner. There we go. Game number three now, series tied 1-1. One, one. Let's try and uh, win this next one, go up 2-1. It's a big game. First period, Masherin scores. Bukestad gets two. If Athens gets one, we need two goals here in the third. Bukestad gets another. I think that was a hat trick for Bukestad. Jeez. So, 4 1 loss there. That sucks. Down 2 1, but lots of hockey left. Uh, we do have to lead, win three of the next four, though, which is uh, pretty tough, obviously, but we can't get it done. Game number four here, first period, um, Larkin scores, Armia and Martinson score for them. Wow, uh, they get three goals, Marchesu gets two, Trocek gets one, Bracco and Larkin score for us, we're down 5-3. Nothing in the third period, geez, that's not what I wanted. So, we're down 3-1 now in the series, I was really hoping the additions of Stassi and Buffalo would just push us over the top, but it is not looking good, we have to win the next three games straight. Um, obviously not impossible, but... Very, very, very tough. So let's see what happens here. HL team, I think, is like 1-1 one one in their second round. But here we go. Game number 5. Sprong, come on. Nothing in the second. And Keller gets 2. Armia scores for them, so 3-1. We're still alive. I honestly thought we were done for there. All right, here we go. So going on to game 6 now. Somehow, still alive. This is crazy. Got to win this one in Florida, bring it back to Detroit, and then hopefully once we're there, uh, we can take it home again in game 7. So... Game number six here. Uh, Bukestad scores for them. We need to answer back quick. Huberdeau. All right. We need two goals here in the third. Huberdeau again. Wow. 
I don't know what it is. The playoffs are just so tough in franchise mode. Obviously, we're saving them, so really nothing you can do. But I feel like our team is definitely better. I honestly, I just realized too. I forgot to check um, the Tampa Bay and the Florida teams lineups, but only in the fifth season. I think they're pretty similar to like what they've been. Uh, so nothing crazy aside from maybe their goalie. Apologize though. I completely just kind of forgot to check those. HL team though, guys, is actually still alive. They're now moving on to the conference final play. The San Jose Barracuda, which is actually um, who the Griffins are playing in real life right now in the conference final. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to sim through this here, see if they make it to the Calder final or not. Looks like it's 2-2 series, three games to go. Um, let's see, we'll just do best lines there. Um, come on, there we go, so they're moving on to the Calder final, playing Rochester. I didn't mean to sim that first game, 4-3 OT loss. Let's do this one period by period, just because we know most of the AHL players. And I think it's, you know, it's Calder Cup final, I think it's uh, important enough. There we go, Hashir, nothing in the second, and spot check, but they go up there, wow. This team's pretty good. Like, our AHL team is stacked, and right now they're beating us 2 nothing. But, uh, never say never. Jeez, we still have guys get injured. I have the injuries turned down to 25, and I swear, like, injuries happen just as much. At least it seems that way. Maybe they don't, like, last as long. Maybe that's what the difference is. Even though it said injury occurrence, not length. So, I don't know. Uh, game 3 here, though. Not looking good. Not looking good at all. We're down 3 nothing. Only way we win this is with a reverse sweep. It's gonna be tough, but obviously, it's possible. Definitely, definitely possible. So game four here, guys. Every single game from here on out is two or die. Come on, we need some big uh, big plays or something. I don't know. Um, Hashir scores again. He's been playing well. Beginning Gardner score for them. Uh, Chris Colo, I don't even know who that is. Asplund scores for them. Down by one. We can still do this. Unfortunately, no. Hashir, like, was trying. I think he probably led the AHL team in points in the playoffs, but unfortunately not enough there. Uh, just can't beat Rochester. And here you guys look at the scoring leaders for the AHL playoffs. As you can see, Sarah Jarvie there, 23 points in 19 games. He was actually crushing it. Spot check there, 17. Uh, Moran, 16. So, his year was actually at 13, but I guess he just kind of came alive there in the final, trying to get us through. We're going to take a look at the NHL team now. Larkin, 11. Strom, 9. Manta, 9. Let's see the guys he picked up. Stassi had 5. Um, I don't even see Bufflin's name here. Did he just, like, not help at all? Zero points in the playoffs. Yeah, that's not good. So we're here guys with draft lottery results, and I didn't even realize this, but Winnipeg actually missed the playoffs, so with their first round pick, we're actually picking 5th overall, so that just makes the Matt Murray um, non-signing even better. Uh, Carolina there, the first overall pick. Uh, that's awesome though. Um, also right here, we passed another playoff goal of getting 6 home playoff games. I remember kind of complaining about that one, but um, we got it, so not the biggest deal of you retired players here. Stassi and Bufflin, or never mind, Bufflin did retire, just kind of took a second there. Stassi hasn't retired yet, so... I'm um, definitely glad I chose to have them keep some salary. Uh, it would have really sucked if I didn't do that. I'm going to take a look here and see just all the guys retiring this year. Eric Stahl, that's a big name. Patrice Bergeron. Justin Williams, I'm surprised actually he took so long. 39 years old he was when he finally called it quits. Mechanics there, 38. Bacchus, Shea Weber, uh, Nielsen there retired. So I still like that trade for Wenberg, even though we ended up flipping him for Stastny. Um, Hemsky there, uh, retired as a free agent, 67 overall. Andrew Ladd, Dustin Bufflin, Brent Seabrook, you got Callahan, Purcell, Stajan, DeHarnay, Fleischman. Uh, let's take a look here at the goalie, see if any big name goaltenders retired or not. Uh, let's see, taking a couple seconds to load. And we got Halak, Elliott, uh, Howard, Emery, Grease, so really nothing crazy. And before we move on to the draft, guys, of course, I'm going to show you the awards as well as who won the Stanley Cup this year. So. As you can see, the Edmonton Oilers actually are these 2021 Stanley Cup champions. I don't think they won it before now, so um, that's kind of crazy. Take a look at all the player awards and stuff like that as well. So, of course, Stanley Cup champions there, Edmonton. I just realized, too, Columbus won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups before that, and we got um, Ryan Murray, Jack Johnson, and Zach Wierenski from their team. So, no idea how they pulled that one off. Uh, President's Trophy here, National Predators, Clarence S. Campbell, of course, Oilers, Prince of Wales, Flyers. I mean, in this game, they actually have Nolan Patrick, which is kind of funny because there's a chance they could get him in real life. And they're actually st and they're absolutely stacked. They also have Joe Valino from the next year. Um, our Ross Trophy here, we already know, is Patrick Kane. Hart there, Taze. Goes to the James Norris. Kane with the Lady Bing. Um, Hallinan with the Calder. Con Smite there to Talbot and the Vesna. Demko with the William M. Jennings. Uh, Bill Masterton to Sergeyev. Stahl with the Selkie. Taze with the Ted Lindsay. And then Kane there with Marisha Shard. HL Awards. Calder Cup champions of the Rochester Americans. Just going to see if our team won anything. We won the Western Conference as well as the Central Division. So... Not too bad, and we won the Western Conference playoffs. Uh, player awards here. I'm hoping Hashir got one, even though, like, uh, actually, Sarah Jarvi, best defenseman. That's awesome. Come on, Hashir should have got one. Vavalainen, uh, least goals against. So that's good. 
was really hoping Shira would have got one. He had like the most points per game, I think, even though he didn't have the most points, but that's okay. So like I was saying, guys, we're picking fifth overall, and as you can see, the first four players drafted all have medium elite potential. I'm really hoping there's still one guy left with that medium elite. That would be awesome. So this Hogan guy here, right winger, projected top five. I feel like we got to go with him. Um, I mean, he's the last guy projected top five. Medium top nine, so, you know, hopefully our scouts are a bit wrong on him. He's actually elite. Um, I mean, you know, I think we got to go with the top five guy. Also, our right wing prospects aren't that great. So, here goes nothing. Please be good. Uh, low elite. I mean, we'll take that. And our next pick, guys, actually isn't until pick number 22 in the fourth round, but there's some good players still left. Low top nine there, medium top six. Low starter, like, this looks to be a really good year in terms of the draft. So, um, hopefully we can get lucky now in the fourth round here. Um, we'll see what our scouts say in terms of potential. So a couple of bomb six. Actually, this guy's probably a top nine because it's high bomb six. Um, let's see. There's a top nine right there. Coral like or something. Fifth slash sixth. So, so we can probably get him in the next round. Let's take uh, this leg one guy. And hope for the best here with him. Uh, low top nine. Not bad. Next pick here, guys. Pick number 22 in the fifth round. Hopefully that Russian dude is still available. That was supposed to go fifth slash sixth. We are at the end of the fifth. Let's take a look. Oh, he's gone. That sucks. I should have probably traded back for like another earlier fifth round pick. Uh, that's my fault for sure. Medium bomb six, though. This guy could have low top nine as well. Let's take a chance. Uh, low top nine. So there we go. Next pick here, pick number 22 in the sixth round. Still some good players going, like medium seventh D, low bomb six, low top nine. Like, that's really crazy. I uh, usually don't see that kind of players still going in the draft. Especially when you compare it to like the 20, was it 18 draft? There's AHL guys pretty much after the first round. Uh, right there's a bomb six forward, so that's a safe pick. Um, could we do better? There's a high HL top two D, so that means he could be low seventh D, potentially bottom six. Um, this guy's supposed to go in the sixth though, so let's take him now. Maybe the defenseman, the next pick, McLean, I think his name is. Bomb six, medium, not bad. And our final pick in the draft here, guys. Pick number twenty two in the seventh round. I don't think I actually traded for any picks in this year's draft, which is fine. Uh, that fifth overall pick we got from Winnipeg definitely made up for it. So. This guy's a high HL top 6. This guy here, H, high HL top 2D. I think he was the one I was looking at. Labroy or Labroyer. I have no idea. Take the pick. And uh, low 7th D. That's okay. We only had 5 picks in that draft, but overall I think it was a pretty good draft. Uh, low elite to low 7th D. No HL, guys. Really can't complain. Alright, guys. We're now at the resign phase here. And as you can see, we have almost $28 million in cap space. A couple big name players assigned, though, in Reinhardt and Juleson. So, just going to go position by position here. Uh, top four centers are all locked up, still, which is good. Hashir, hopefully will grow over the summer, still in 83. Spotchek needs a new deal, in 82. Been playing in the AHL. I don't really know about him, because really no spot for him to play center. Maybe he plays wing. Uh, Frost here, 22-68. He's not worth giving a contract to. Uh, the rest of those guys aren't high enough overall yet. Left wings are all locked up here, it looks like. Clayton Keller's morale is not that great. It's probably why he's not growing. Hopefully he'll bounce back. Smith here, 23-79. Pretty good, like, AHL guy. We'll give him a one-year deal two-way. Um, same goes for Svechnikov, 24 and 79. Really waiting for him to do something. Hopefully he'll break out here soon. Grunstrom, 23, 78. He's actually looked pretty good. Give him a two-year two-way deal. Um, Bernard's been, like, a decent fourth-line AHL guy. He wants three years, though. I'll give him, like, he's 25. I'll give him two years at the minimum of 750 k uh, I think I missed somebody there. Case, 24-78. He's a decent AHL player. Give him two years to a deal. AHL team's honestly pretty good. Might as well bring most of those guys back. Uh, right wingers here. We got Reinhardt needs a new deal. This is going to be expensive for sure. 8.2 million. Not too bad. Does it get cheaper at all? Or is five years the sweet spot? Um, five years is the sweet spot. So 8.2 million. Let's see if he'll take 7 million for five years. As someone was saying about the 85% rule. So uh, that is just over 85%. Plus 7 million for 90 overall wingers. Pretty fair. Mantha here, 26, 85, so he's pretty much done growing. He was an 86 at one point last year. 5.5 million, though, for him. It's kind of expensive. Um, I don't know. I'm going to let that go for now. Bracco is basically like a fourth line right ringer. Uh, 1.5, though. I mean, that's pretty fair. Let's try 1.4 there for two years. Uh, the rest of those guys aren't good enough to sign yet. Defenseman here. So, Juleson, obviously very solid. I'm going to give him a contract. 5.7 for two years. Does he get cheaper at all? Wow, he actually gets much. He gets up to 9 million. So I think that's a good sign. I think that says he's going to get better. Let's try and get him for two years here at 5.2. Maybe he'll take that. Hopefully he's like a 90 by then. Uh, that'd be awesome. Jake Bean here also needs a new deal. 23 years old, 84 overall. He's actually dropped one, unfortunately. Um, 3.9 for four. 
So that's actually, or we could get them one year, or two years for 2.8. I wonder about the two years. It's quite a lot cheaper. Uh, let's try two years here at like 2.7, just to see if he bounces back or not. Uh, it's a pretty good deal for us. Sarah Jarvie here, crush the AHL. I don't know about the NHL though, if he's good enough at 81 overall. So I'm just going to give him a qualifying offer for now. Probably will go and do the same for spot check. Shabbat there's Morel's way down as he was scratched in the NHL once we got Bufflin, but... Hopefully over the summer he'll go back up, especially if we put him back in the lineup. Um, let's see who else needs a new deal, or just everyone else there is unsigned. Bishop here needs a new deal, 34 years old, 87 overall, starter potential now opposed to Elite. Really depends on the price for him, 7.6 million. I mean, if there's no other goalie in free agency, we kind of have to give him an offer. Um, I don't know though. I think for both Mantha and for Bishop, just going to wait a couple days, see how much money we have left, and then decide what to do with them. And as you guys can see here, Reinhardt accepted our offer. Same with Fetchnikov, Smith, Bracco, Bean. I think everybody should. Juleson, Bernhardt, Grundstrom, Case. So I think everyone accepted. Going to see how much money we have to spend on Mantha and Bishop. Um, 12 million cap space, and they actually both combined want 12 million. So our team's not really getting any better. We're basically losing Bufflin, who we rented. And then hopefully there's some growth over the summer that'll make our team better. Um, I don't know though, like Mantha 85, like 5.5 million, I think that's a bit more than 85 should get, like I'd rather pay an extra million and a half and get a 90, like Reinhardt's making 7, uh, defenseman here, or not defenseman, sorry, goalies, Bishop's an 87 and he wants 7 million, like that seems ridiculous, 4 years too, for 1 year, it's still 8.6, um, I think I'm gonna let Bishop go and see what else is available in free agency for goalies. And then for right wingers here, I'll give Mantha an offer, but it's going to be a lot less than uh, five and a half. So I'm offering Mantha here 4.725 for two years. Hopefully he'll accept that. And like I said, I think I'm just going to let Bishop go for now. If he is the best willing free agency, then maybe I'll make him an offer. But right now, I feel like that's just too much money for him. All right, guys, we're at the free agency period. Excited to see kind of what players are available. We have 8.2 million in cap space. Uh, Derek Steffen there, Tyler Johnson. Really don't need a center, though. Mark Stahl, 87 overall. Kane, Ryan Strom. Uh, let's see, Stetcher there. Kulikov, Granlin, Jacob Larson, or that's not Jacob Larson, some other Larson here, Johan Larson. Uh, so what we obviously need, though, is a goalie. Let's see, hopefully there's a good goalie available. If it's just Bishop, probably just going to have to pay him. And as you can see, Bishop is the best goalie available there, and he wants $8 million. So uh, like 300 k more than he wanted from us, so really not like he's even going for that much of a deal. Two teams interested, though, so uh, maybe he'll come back with us if we do give him an offer. He's 34 years old, though. He's going to start getting worse. Like, that exact story potential is very scary. I kind of want to actually look at the goalie market in terms of, like, trades before I actually make that signing for Bishop. Uh, we will check the 2A market right now, though, to see what's available. Could always use, like, a better prospect goalie. 20 years old, 69 overall, low fringe starter. Um, that's really not too bad. We actually just traded away a couple prospect goalies, so why not give him an offer? Looking at players here, there's this Kuleshov guy, 21 years old, 79 overall, medium top six, uh... Drafted by us in 2019, 20th overall, and what the heck? Do we trade him? We must have traded him, because there's no way I would have not signed this guy, unless I completely missed him, which maybe I did. I don't think so, though. Like, I was looking pretty uh, diligently through our players, and I did not see him, so uh, I'm going to give this guy an offer. I'm assuming we didn't trade him, or assuming we didn't uh, miss him, I should say. Murata here, 20 years old, same one overall, low top 4D. A couple teams interested there. Let's try and uh, steal him away. Looks like a very good prospect. Um, this Benstrom guy here, Jesus, 20 years old, 84 overall, medium top 9 forward, wow, no team's interested, if we could get him, that's just an absolute steal, how is he available, no idea. There's also another really good player here in this Pyre guy, 21 years old, 76 overall already, uh, low top 9, we'll see if we can get him here from Toronto, I was thinking about maybe giving this, uh, Renquitz guy an offer as he has medium top 9 forward, but he's 67 overall, so by the time he's good enough to even crack the HL lineup, He'll probably actually like never um, like grow enough, so not really worth it. Just gonna look here and see if there's any other 80s available. That's just crazy. Um, doesn't look like it though. Me and Bomb Six obviously isn't that great. So if we could get those four guys I made offers on, that'd be so sick. All right, guys. So looking through the trading block here, and as you can see, LA has Jonathan Quick on the block, 35 years old. So I think he's the same age as Bishop, maybe a year younger. 88 overall, so he's actually one overall higher. Same potential and salaries at 5.6 million. So that's a lot less than Bishop wanted. Um, value doesn't look to be that high. If we can get a trade for Quick to go through, that would be insane. All right, guys, so here's the offer I'm making LA, offering them Barbashev and Keller for Quick and a second round pick. So the salary is about the same. Um, Barbashev we don't really need now. Stroman, uh, Stassi are our top two centers. And then Hishir and Athens, I think, are fine for third and fourth line guys. 
Um, Barbashev also has a new needs a new contract after this season, so probably will want to raise. And then Keller, since we trade for him, like Rowenski, uh, like a bunch of low elite players, just has never grown. So I um, figured just might as well trade him now. He has a good amount of value. They don't want him, but obviously he has the value there. And we have guys coming up like Comtois, Geno Smith. So um, we should be okay in that front, I think. So let's see what LA says. Trade accepted. There we go. And as you guys can see here, this goalie prospect accepted our offer. Um, I'm really hoping that 84 guy accepts our offer. Um, 71 overall defenseman with top 4D accepted. Pyre there, 75 overall accepted. The 83 did accept. That's crazy. So basically just like replaced Clayton Keller. He's actually like a better third line guy. He's a two-way forward. So I uh, replaced Clayton Keller. Got Jonathan Quick for our goalie. Still have $8 million in salary. We also have this Kuleshov guy who I might have missed signing or we traded and then they didn't sign him. So we have $8 million now to spend on free agency. And we have our lineup pretty much the exact same, if not better. So I'm thinking I might just try and sign a really good player for one year. And then our team for next year should be awesome. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the depth chart. And basically, the only thing we need right now is a better third pair defenseman, uh, preferably right-handed, as we already have Bean, who's left-handed. So Stahl here is left-handed and old. Kulikov's left-handed and kind of old. And then you got Stetcher here, 27, right-handed, 85 overall. I mean, he'd be perfect. So I think if we do this, we probably trade Shabbat for whatever we can get, as we have a ton of other prospect defensemen. So four years, he wants 5.225. Um, I'd prefer to get him to, like, two years, just because I think, um, four years we'll have a bunch of, like, say, down and other defensive prospects possibly passing him. Um, we'll have to give him more money, though. Actually, you know what? What if we just get him cheaper? We can go seven years. He's only 34. We can get him really cheap. Like, seven years, five million. We could just trade him, um, once, like, a guy passes him. I think this might be better. Seven years, five million. Let's try that. So I should just give Stetcher the offer he wanted. As he said, we didn't give him enough money, even though we gave him the more years, so... That kind of sucks. I think I might have got a little greedy there. I should have just given him, like, whatever it was for four years and then tried to trade him afterwards. Um, let's see. I mean, I guess we could go Kulikov, even though he is left-handed, um, to play on that third pair. He's still 85, like the same overall. He's not as young, but, like, it didn't really matter the age as we're going to try and trade him anyway. Um, like I said, Stahl, though, at 34, I feel like he's going to start regressing very soon. So Kulikov, 85, plus for the third pair, it makes more sense. No other teams are interested right now, so we'll probably get him pretty cheap. Um, let's see, so three years, so he's 33, four years, saves us about 500k. So I'm going to try doing guys offering him 5 million for four years, a little less than what he wants, but um, it gives him an extra year, plus it's not too crazy, like I feel like I do seven years, it might be harder to move his contract if he does start to regress, but at four years, it's not too bad, plus the 5 million gives, it still gives us some flexibility, we'll have about 2.5 million in cap space, so hopefully Kulikov will say yes. Still kind of bummed out, we missed out on Stetcher. So Kulikov rejected our offer, says he's looking for a team that's more of a playoff contender, um, we made the playoffs the last two straight years, and I don't even know if New Jersey made the playoffs this year, and we made it to, what was it, the second round of the playoffs? I have to check this now, because I don't even think New Jersey made the playoffs. Um, I could be wrong. They didn't even make the playoffs, what a joke. So Mark Stahl is still available, and really our only option at this point. 34 years old, though, I kind of want to give him, like, a one-year deal. He wants $6.6 .6 million for that, though. So maybe we'll do the two-year deal. We'll give him $6 million for two years. That's till he's 36. Hopefully, he'll just retire after this year. Don't have to worry about him after that. But obviously, adding him to our D would just kind of make our top six crazy. And as you guys can see there, Mark Stahl did accept our offer. So that's awesome. I think our team is going to be so stacked next year. And as you guys can see here, Sarah Jarvie just got offered $1.96 million for two years by the Hurricanes. Um, right now, though, he's like our seventh best defenseman at best. Maybe even our eighth best. Um, we get a third round pick in return. So... I'm going to tell them to remind me in six days. I want to see if I can possibly trade him for something better than that. Um, oh, man, it just seemed, I think, like almost six days. Okay, just like about five days there, I think. So let's see if we can get back better than a third. If not, we'll just take it, I think. All right, guys, so I thought it could get fancy and trade Sarah Jarvie, but every single team knew about the offer he had on him. So basically, uh, they wouldn't take him. So I'm thinking I'm just going to take the third-round pick, like I said. He's like a seventh, maybe eighth defenseman for us, not worth the two million. So the third round pick is fine. All right, guys, so right here's what the team looks like at the end of the summer. As you can see, we have Skinner, Strom, and Reinhardt still on the first line. Mantha, Stasty, and Larkin on the second. Bemstrom, Hishir, and Sprong on the third. So basically the kid line. Uh, Bracco, Athanasio, and Bertuzzi there on the fourth. Defense here is very solid. We have Juleson, McAvoy, Stahl, Jones, Murray, and Bean. And then in goal, of course, we have Jonathan Quick. Hoping for some big things from him with Bebo backing him up. HL team here, we have Comtois, Velarde, Kuleshov on the first line. Svechikov, Spotcheck, and Haberts there on the second. Uh, Smith, Morand, and Case on the third. And then Bernhardt, Payer, and Grunstrom there on the fourth. So HL team's looking really good again. Uh, defense here, we have Dallin, Shabbat on the top pair. Heiskanen, Dermott, 
and then Hicketts and Chero. So the D is very solid. Honestly, probably going to trade Shabbat, maybe even Dermot. Like, we don't need those guys in the AHL. So we can get something back that helps the NHL team. I think it'd be worth it. Um, AHL starter is actually Lamb now. He's surpassed Vava Linen, who's now the backup. So um, both teams looking very good. But like I was saying, we have so much depth in terms of prospects. We really want to try and trade a couple of them. We're probably going to go down in morale and stuff once the season starts for not playing the NHL. For a better NHL player, um, I think we probably use a better right winger. Uh, maybe we could even do something with the defense. I'm not really sure. You guys can definitely let me know. Um, as you can see here, two AHL team has 85 offense, 83 defense, 81 goaltending. NHL team, 93 offense, 95 defense, and 88 goaltending. So uh, I think the team is looking very good again. Hopefully the sim is good for us if we do make the playoffs and we have another run of the Stanley Cup. Besides that though, guys, that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.